Hi everyone, hope you can all hear us. Um, so just introduce us quickly. Um, we're, we're both um, Clyde, at Clyde & Co. So I'm Katrina, I'm a trainee solicitor. Um, and this and the other person who's joining us is Miranda. So she's a future trainee solicitor. Um, just to give you a bit of background about me. So I am a, in my first seat, just coming to the end of my first seat. And I've done employment and uh, solicitor's negligence. And before that, I was actually a paralegal at Clyde & Co. I don't know, Miranda, do you want to do a quick intro to yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. I am Miranda. I just finished at the University of Exeter studying law. I did the vacation scheme in June, so fresh out of the application process, and I sat with the construction team. Perfect. So I'm going to kick off by just giving an overview of Clyde & Co. So hopefully you know that it, it's a law firm um, and it's now considered a global law firm but it was founded in 1933 um, and at, at that time it was kind of a niche shipping firm and it only had about 20 partners until the 60s when uh, Michael Payton took over as senior partner. So you might not know what senior partner is but that's kind of the head of, head of a law firm and um, as soon as he took over it's kind of expanded hugely um, and we've now got offices in over 50 countries we've got over uh, 1800 partners and Michael Payton is still working at the firm he's the he's chairman and um, so you can still see him around the office which is lovely it's so nice to see where the firm's kind of come from and that he's still involved in it and um, so yeah if you if you follow us on social media which I would encourage you to do so have a look at our LinkedIn and that kind of thing you'll see that we we're opening offices quite regularly so one of our big target markets is uh, the is America and North America. So we've um, we're just opening so in the process of opening offices in America, in uh, Las Vegas um, and Arizona, um, and also recently in Vancouver. Um, so as you can see, I put on the slide there that that our revenue was six hundred million this year. Um, and what's really interesting is that over half of that now comes from outside of the UK. So that just shows how far we've come from being a firm in the 60s, where uh, we only had 20 partners based in the UK. Um, and also really interestingly, this year, we've had a big change where we've had our first senior partner who's from outside of the UK, uh, and also our first woman senior partner, which is absolutely great. Um, so she's based in the Montreal office. Um, and yeah, so as I said, historically, we were kind of a niche shipping firm, and we still do a lot of shipping, but we have kind of four or five key core sectors that we focus on. So insurance, energy, trade and commodities and infrastructure and transport. So a lot of our work falls within these five core sectors. But we also do, we're also considered a full, full service firm. So we do lots of other things. So as I said, I did employment in my first seat, which obviously doesn't fall into any of those categories. And uh, I'm doing solicitors negligence at the minute. So you get, there's a lot of, a lot of opportunities to do different, different types of work. Although just to point out that a lot of what we do is litigation based so around 70 percent of the work we do is litigation which means kind of contentious work so that would include things like going to court arbitrations or mediations so we do do some corporate work but it's mainly focused on on litigation which is really really interesting because you're kind of at the forefront of these really interesting disputes um which i think should bring me to the next slide um which uh just kind of we're going to go over a little bit some of the some of the examples of work we do. So some of the interesting cases we've been involved in. So the first one there to do with insurance. So that's a dispute over a footballer caught for insurance fraud following a goal shown on TV. So this is really really interesting. Um, this was a an amateur footballer claimed on his insurance and said that he wasn't able to work anymore after being involved in a car crash. But his insurers, which was Aviva, one of our biggest clients they thought kind of smelled something fishy and uh, asked Clyde and Co to investigate after they'd seen his evidence. And it turns out that Clyde and Co found that there were videos of him scoring goals on TV <laughs> and they'd been viewed by like 25,000 times, but sorry, but yeah, by 25,000 people. Um, so yeah, he kind of got caught red handed with that one and he'd been posting on social media um, about playing football all the time and that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, that, that's really interesting work. And then also, um, something else that we're involved in which i think is is really interesting and kind of at the forefront of technology is advising on smart contracts so if you get the chance have a google of our our consultancy it's called clyde code and this was set up a few years ago by fee earners within the firm um, and we work we have technical expertise as well as lawyers working on our consultancy and it's basically 
advising on contracts to do with blockchain. So blockchain is this technology, which I won't try and explain um, because I probably won't do it very well, but it basically means that, that there's an event happens and that that triggers uh, something like a payout. So it works very well in insurance because there's an event, um, for example, uh, an extreme weather event, or if you have a ship that needs to stay at a certain temperature for the products that it's carrying, if the temperature falls, then you could have an insurance payout. And it means that it, the, the payout comes really quickly. So it's really handy for insurance. Um, and just in terms of applications and interviews and that kind of thing, if this is something you're interested in, getting up to speed on this would be really, really useful to have, um, to be able to talk about in, in applications and interviews for vocation schemes, because it's something that I think is just gonna get bigger and bigger. Um, so if you, if you know about it, it's definitely, definitely something that uh, would be good to talk about. Um, and then marine, so some of our marine work, um, I'm sure a lot of people recognise the Ever Given uh, ship there, just in the picture, which blocked the Suez Canal in March and caused absolute mayhem. Um, I think it caused $10 billion, uh, restricted $10 billion worth of trade um, over the days that it was caught there. So you can imagine that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of disputes going on to do with that. So we represent producers of more than $100 million worth of cargo that were also, was on board that. And also we represent insurers of over $125 million worth of cargo. So I think those kind of insurance disputes will be going on for probably years and years. Um, and it took a long time for them to, to settle some of the disputes uh, between the different governments involved. So again, that's really, really interesting work and just shows kind of what we do is at the absolute forefront of what's going on around the world. And then, yeah, just finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the energy disputes we have. Um, something else that just shows kind of how interesting and how varied the work we do at Clydes is. So we've become one of the market leaders in renewables work, and we've been involved in that sector for about 25 years. So probably quite ahead of the curve, um, ahead of other companies. So um, we can get involved uh, with disputes to do with renewables. Um, so we can get involved from the, the from the from the beginning. So the the life cycle of the project, but also if there's any disputes. So for example, with a wind turbine, if something breaks on it. Um, so for example, we we uh, were involved in recently a case where the leg of an offshore wind farm installation fell off in the off the coast of Northumberland and there was an arbitration dispute over that. So we were involved in, in advising the contractor on that. Um, so yeah, again, just really, really interesting work. And it kind of highlights just the, the the renewables work that we're doing and how interesting that is. Um, I think the next slide then, I'll go over to Miranda and she's going to talk a bit why, about why she chose Clyde & Co. Hi, so yeah, thank you Kat for that. I think even I learned something new that I quickly jotted <laughs> down. Um, my One of my key reasons for applying was the insurance focus. It is very unique to Clyde & Co. And as highlighted by those quite juicy stories, it does produce such topical and relevant work. Um, we actually moved house around the same time as the Ever Given and lots of our stuff didn't arrive because the boats of our stuff couldn't get through. So I do feel of Clyde and Co's work, there's such an interesting person, there's so many interesting like, little personal connections, as well as I do wonder how they caught that football, right? If it was lots of lawyers watching in the office football games and suddenly went, that's the one. <laughs> so I think it's just, it really is really eye-catching work. Um, I saw on the website there's a 24-7 emergency number for crises and emergencies and I think that that does speak to the really risky environments and dynamic projects which Clyde & Co also works on and I thought that's really different and distinct and I liked that. Um, as Kat said, environmental work is really big at Clyde & Co. Um, something that I picked, on, picked up on during the vacation scheme is that at the moment there's a big move in the US and Southeast Asia to convert oil rigs to um, environmental reefs. This isn't something that's actually currently possible in the UK, but Clyde & Co had written a research paper on it, actually written by my trainee buddy, funny enough, that I found out, which was really nice as well. But I think it just shows that Clyde & Co really does anticipate the next big environmental move. And as someone who's keen on the environment and interested in what's gonna, where it's going, I think this is something that really did appeal to me. So I've just written a, a little top research tip um, as the applications are opening soon. Uh, something that I wish I'd done a little bit more of in my application would be to think about the work from the London office, because I'm guessing that's where most people would apply, and then think about it from a specific international Clyde & Co perspective. So 
I've written a few questions at the bottom that I won't read out because uh, we've got quite a lot to get on with, but hopefully you are able to jot, jot them down and get the um, provokes of thought. Next slide, please, Kat. Thank you. Thank you. So just to go over the route to the vacation scheme, the first step is a written application with um, multiple questions. And I have a video interview here. I'm not sure. I didn't have a video interview, but there might, there might now be one. Um, I'll have to check that for you. But the second stage is an online assessment day with um, multiple activities. My first tip for knowing where to start with stage one, the application, is to take a piece of um, paper and write interest in like in two bubbles, interests and not interested at first glance, and just go through the website and find those kind of themes and topics which appeal to you. So for me, it was kind of energy and then looking at specific cases, environment, shipping, aerospace, that sort of thing. But there were some things that didn't necessarily appeal at first glance. And I think that's helpful because you know what not to put in your application, you know where your strengths and passions are. I think that will come through more, more genuinely on the application, but also at interview, you don't, you don't want to necessarily be picked up on something that you think I'm not 100% interested on in and things that you aren't interested in. I think you might also want to prepare an answer for, you know, it's not something that I would 100% want to do four seats in, but should I do one seat, I'd be you know, prepared to still do well in that seat and then give an example of when you've worked well on something which was perhaps not not your cup of tea. So I think it, I think it works well for both of those things. Um, and my top tip for stage two is to prepare to be challenged on your ideas throughout the day. I know that might sound a bit obvious. And for me, I expected the interviewers to be constantly poking me and challenging me, which there was some of, but there was actually moments where um, graduate recruitment was asking me a few questions. And in the group exercise where someone presented a completely different argument to mine and they did it so well. And I think I just couldn't believe like throughout the day how many different discussions and debates there were. I think that's a really positive thing actually to engage in. And it is interesting if you're really interested in Clive Co's work, but I would say, ironically, because I'm doing so much talking now, remember the power of the pause. Don't be afraid to just take a moment. It shows that you're listening. It shows that you're acknowledging the other person. And I, I exercised it a bit, but I definitely did it more in the um, final exit interview and it, it was helpful. And I think I said twice, oh, I, I, can I just take a minute to think about that? And they didn't bat an eyelid, they didn't mind at all. So do feel confident doing that. In terms of the vacation scheme, I sat with the construction and projects team, which is part of the infrastructure sector. Uh, a highlight for me and something which I didn't expect to be able to do so early on in an internship, was um, I said, oh, to my supervisor, who's a senior associate, I said, oh, I've got some free time on Thursday. I'm really interested in Clyde and your work and Clyde and Co's work in Ethiopia. It's not something that I know too much about. Would it, could I go ahead and do some research on infrastructure in Ethiopia? And he said, go ahead. And then it was just brilliant to be able to actually create something that I was interested in and then gain feedback of such a specialized person within that area. He'd done a secondment and work in Tanzania. So to have someone work through my ideas and offer criticism and positive feedback as well, it was just something that also just the confidence and feeling so comfortable to be able to ask a senior associate, would you mind if I did this? So I think that really spoke highly of the firm's culture and the fact that there's a lot, there's so there's opportunities to create um, work for yourself and get involved as Kat has done as a uh, training leading on the climate change group as well. So, yeah, I think you've echoed a lot of the advice that I would give as well. That is one of my top tips for people the, the pausing thing. The interviewers do not mind if you take a second. And at one point, I actually said, Sorry, can I just restart my answer again? Because there's no point waffling on and on. And so, yeah, that is, that is my big top tip. And I actually did do a video interview, not for clients, but for a different firm. And the main thing is just to stay calm. So, uh, I think there's some stats on the amount of people that get, get presented with a video interview and just cut it out straight away because they get scared. So just stick with it and remain calm. And one of the things that happened in my video interview was I did jazz hands. Um, so <laughs> I, I said something like, I'm really innovative and did jazz hands, still managed to get through. So don't don't worry about, um, yeah, just, just remain calm and keep going through it. Um, so just to move on 
to the next slide. So I just wanted to kind of outline my experience as a trainee really briefly. So Miranda kind of touched on it there, just how open her supervisor was to hearing her suggestions. And that's something that I've definitely found that I really, really love the people I work with. I think um, as a paralegal and then having now worked in two different teams as well, everyone I've worked with has been great and it's they're so approachable. You know, they have this thing called an open door policy, but Cloud is, is, does really have that. Um, so that, that's what I find one of the best things about working at Clyde's. I've also had a bit of client contact, not a huge amount, but um, this, in this seat particularly, I've attended quite a few client calls um, to take notes and that kind of thing. And also sending a few emails to clients, drafting them as well as sending them myself. And I've been really, really lucky, particularly in the pandemic, to have been able to attend court in person during this seat. So I was able to attend about four times, um, which was just an amazing experience. And it's so different watching it online to actually being there in the courtroom. And then, yeah, I've had a lot of different tasks. So the thing that I kind of enjoy the most is research. Um, and you get to do that on, on a wide variety of topics using lots of different resources, obviously quite similar to what you do at university, but with a different focus and with the aim of kind of getting that into a draft. So drafting letters and in this seat, I've been, I've drafted quite a few reports to insurers, which is just really great experience. And then also something which I think sets Clyde's apart is the kind of emphasis on our personal and professional development. So Miranda, you said you had an associate supervisor during the back scheme. I also have my own um, associate. Well, he's actually a legal director, so I've hit the jackpot. Um, so I've got a legal director and a partner supervisor and I get appraisals with them every three months. Um, and they we kind of work through what's been good, what I need to improve on and what uh, what my next kind of steps are for the for the training contract. We also have an internal mentor program so you can reach out to someone that you already know within the firm and approach them to ask them to be your mentor or um, if you don't know anyone you can you can find someone through the mentor program and that's great because it's not it's not quite the same as a supervisor it's it's someone who's a bit more removed and they're just interested in your actual development they don't kind of see your work or anything like that and you can talk through some things that you're not quite as comfortable talking to your supervisor about and um, so yeah that that's a really good thing that we've got and then Miranda kind of mentioned briefly there that I'm one of the co-leaders of the trainee climate change group. So this is a group with about between 30 and 40 uh, trainees and paralegals in it. And we basically do pro bono work, uh, business development, corporate social responsibility. And uh, we, yeah, so we're a group of trainees that do that kind of work and we do that for the firm um, and support kind of fairness within, within the firm um, to do their climate change work. So that is something which I, I, I haven't heard of any other firm having. And I can't take too much credit for setting that group up because it was set up by the, some trainees in the intake above, but we've kept it going and expanded that a bit. So if you're interested in climate change, um, that's really, really great experience. And also just the kind of level of work that you can get involved in as part of that group. So Miranda mentioned that article that was written um, on the oil rigs. So that was written, written by a climate change group member. And the fact that he was able to get a kind of article published on PLC is just absolutely amazing. I mean, most kind of junior associates wouldn't even get that experience. So yeah, you, you just get a real variety of things, of tasks um, and exposure, both internally and externally. And then I've also been involved in quite a few quite a few pro bono cases. So I've got an employment case at the minute, which is kind of going through the motions of going to tribunal. And again, just the kind of exposure you get, I have like one-on-one -on -one contact with the client and um, that kind of thing. And like we've drafted our own court documents. Um, so yeah, really, really great experience. I know we've got 10 minutes left. So I don't know whether we want to move on. We did say we'd talk a bit about, experience, uh, about advice, but maybe we can touch on that in the Q and A as well. Um, so we've just got some some key dates and deadlines. We can put this slide up again at the end, maybe, so people can get these get these dates, um, and they'll also be on our website as well. And we've also got uh, Thomas in the early careers team. I think he's on the call, so he might be able to answer questions on anything to do with this. Um, and then, yeah, we mentioned keeping up to date on our social media. So we've got uh, the, the early careers team having a, their own Instagram and Facebook, and then we also have LinkedIn for the, the wider firm. Um, so yeah, moving on to q and I'll stop sharing my screen so you can see our lovely faces. 
and Ryan Q. Thank you so much, both of you. That was really, really interesting. Um, and thank you to everyone who's watching. Um, really appreciate you joining the Rent Replacement Legal event. So I'm Ali, I'm one of the co-founders of RMP, and I'm going to be looking at the questions that came in. So we've had loads and lots of upvoting as well. So thank you to everyone who's asked a question. I've been going through them as you've been talking. I'm trying to kind of split them into a couple of areas, whether it's about tips or whether it's about the firm. So I'm going to try my best to go through the most upvoted. Um, so we'll start with some um, tips for, for careers. Um, one of the students wants to ask, do you recommend students to take the LPC or the SQE? Um, I think that question might be for the early careers team, to be <laughs> honest. Um, I did the LPC, Miranda's just about to start the LPC, um, but I don't, to be honest, know too much about the, the SQE. I know there's a lot of talk about it when I was at uni, but I don't know too much about it and which one to recommend. Well, that is probably a good prompt to mention that um, I think you're going to be in the booth afterwards, aren't you? So if there's any uh, kind of specific uh, questions like that, then I'm sure the recruitment team will be very happy to answer them. Um, OK, so um, I know you covered some kind of tips and advice, but uh, I guess more broadly, as someone's asking, have you got any tips for paving a career in the legal industry and what will help you make that successful application? Do you want to take that one, Miranda? Sure. Um... Yeah, it's a it's a loaded question. It's a good one. I I think it depends what what stage you're at. I think I think it does depend what stage you're at. I think what I'd say is looking back, two things I'd say is don't be afraid to start small. Um, what I mean by that is take every opportunity. Say yes. I mean I know everyone's got other commitments, family commitments, and work, so you have to have a bit of balance. But you know I did struggle to find legal experience in my first year because it was so competitive and. A lot of people were getting it through family members who were lawyers and stuff and i didn't have that so i started really small i just went to court i walked in um literally just wrote to a court and said i'd really like to shadow is there anyone i could shadow and they said basically yes turn up tomorrow and i took notes <laughs> just took notes and i got to know everyone in the court and i knew i wanted to be a um solicitor so it was kind of a, a different way of coming in but there was, of course, you have to remember the solicitor barristers in court, and I was able to talk to them and learn a little bit more. And for firms like Clyde & Co and other firms as well, it's, you know, litigation and arbitration and that sort of thing. They're really big and they do, they do make a lot of business for firms. So I think it was useful for showing an interest in that. So if you are, I know courts aren't open at the moment, so perhaps, perhaps it'll be more useful in a few months, hopefully when things start to open up. But if you are finding it quite difficult to start out, Remember that courts are there and there's so much to learn from courts if it's actual law, but also those interpersonal skills. And I'd secondly say something that I, sorry, just a notification, just a notification gone there, but I'd secondly like to say that Clyde & Co has released a virtual internship, which is free to join and anyone can do it. And I think it's a brilliant way to um, get, get involved and show your commitment to the firm. But I think always think about how you can make a little bit more out of it. So do post it on LinkedIn, do, you know, um, say that you'd like to speak to someone from Clyde and Co if they see this post or something like that and then maybe reach out to a few trainees and say oh, I, I, um, you know, I read your research on this and I completed uh, a little bit of a research brief during the virtual internship and I'd love to learn a bit more so always my two pieces of advice would be don't be afraid to start small and also always think about how you can make a little bit more out of it and I think you'll be in um, yeah it's a good start <laughs> I hope that helps Thank you so much, Miranda. And if you thought you'd got away from it, someone else has asked you another specific question as well, which That's I think nice. is a really good one. So uh, you might have to take the uh, take the pause on this one. But um, so thank you very much, Tegan. Uh, great questions, got loaded up up votes. So um, Tegan says, um, Miranda, I was hoping you could expand on your experiences at the assessments day. For example, what topics were debated, uh, and what sort of topics um, did participants present on? It's a really good question. Thank you, Tegan. I think. Um, First of all, you don't need to present on a topic, like you don't prepare a topic. They give you a um, topic as part of a written exercise, as was on solar renewable energy, which actually did then link to um, a project that Clyde Co was really doing in Nigeria. About a month later, I saw it on the website and I thought, oh, this was real. <laughs> um, and so you have about, about, I can't remember how long it is, about half an hour to read it and then prepare an answer. So. I, you don't need to have wider knowledge, but do think about, Cloud Co does have that insurance angle, do think about the insurance side. 
as Kat said, litigation is big. Do think about where there could be disputes, risks, where it could all go wrong, essentially. I think keep that thinking in mind is really helpful. And then Tegan also asked, um, well, yeah, I think I've kind of answered that, but during the um, our, our um, question for the group exercise was quite tricky because it was choosing, we, had, we were pretending to have tons of money, which was nice, and then you had to choose um, which cause you'd give it to. So if you, and it was, if you opened a marine sanctuary, all the villagers would lose all their ability to fish and they'd go hungry. So you had to kind of, which one did you choose? It was really difficult. Um, so I think they do choose something that's quite, you know, it, it, there's lots of angles to it. And I think my best advice would be, don't be afraid to fully discuss all those angles and say that it is tricky because you've got to consider this factor and you can't predict every impact. And I think it's good to just show awareness that there are wider implications and you can't know everything. So that's what I'd advise. Thank you very much, Miranda. Some great answer there. Um, and I noticed a few come in um, more kind of down the recruitment route. So um, thank you so much for all of those regarding international um, students and opportunities. So probably ones to pick up with, with the recruitment team. Um, I mentioned I'd split them down into some about careers and some about the firm. Um, someone asked, um, who are the firm's biggest competitors? And someone else said, and how do um, Clyde & Co retain their position as, as number one in certain industries? So maybe Kat, that could be a couple for you to take. Yeah, the one about our biggest competitors is actually really interesting. And this sounds sad, but we were talking, about, talking to some of the trainees about this recently. Because um, historically, as, as we've kind of spoken about, we're a shipping and, and insurance firm. So that's who our competitors used to be. So people like Kennedy's, um, DWF, DAC Beechcroft, they were historically our competitors, but as we're becoming more of a kind of full service firm, we're kind of moving up to compete with, with different firms, but still with our focus on those core sectors. So it's actually quite difficult to say who our competitors are. I think you would have to do it kind of field by field. So as I said, insurance would be those firms um, and other litigation firms. And um, so uh, yeah, other firms that do a lot of litigation. So things like Michigan Dorea, and um, those type of firms um but yeah it's, it's, it's difficult to say and um, what was it what was the other question sorry the second one uh, and how do you retain your spots i think the actual question says um head of kennedy's in the insurance uh, industry oh, there you go he touched on what i said already um i don't want to say anything bad about kennedy's they're a really really great firm and um they're a great firm to be against as well that's kind of one of the things that people say that that we have a good rapport with them even even when we're against them um but yeah. i think just the quality of work that we do so in the seat that i'm in at the minute the solicitors negligence team we're top tier and we're the only firm in that in that top tier and just like working with the people that i work with it's just like they they just are so good at what they do they're such good lawyers and they work really well with each other and there's no kind of they don't hold back on when they've got when they've got something that they want to disagree with um so I think, yeah, just the standard of work here is just amazing. Um, and that's probably how we retain it. And also, as I say, just people working really well together. I think once once you work so well in the team, that kind of increases the, the standard of work. Amazing, right, thank you both of you. I'm just conscious of time and we are approaching um, 11 o'clock, bang on, 11 o'clock now. So um, no, no, there were so many questions and so much participation. So we didn't have a chance to cover your question. Firstly, apologies, but, um, please do visit the uh, Clyde, and Co Clyde & Co booth. Uh, they'll be happening now for the next 15 minutes and we'll be coming back um, in around 15 minutes time for the University of Law. But Miranda Cat, thank you so much for your time for presentations, really, really insightful. Thanks very much. Not a thank problem. Thank you for having us. Thank you.